What's up, tribe? How you guys doing? Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And I hope you like this video. This is season one, episode four of Lovers and Friends. First of all, before I even get into the review, once again, I want to thank Markel Logan, the um, creator, executive producer, and I want to thank Chase and Reality, um, the channel, um, for the Justice League commercial, y'all. Check it out. Check it out. We look cute or whatever. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> let's jump into this episode so we are ep we are on date number two now for premiere he's going out on a date with the person that he chose but, yeah he chose and i believe his name is dennis um first of all dennis was early and so for premiere that's a big thing because he has been very clear that he is all about punctuation he don't do late and he don't have no problem you know he don't really tolerate late and they had a decent conversation. I feel like that conversation flowed a little bit. But let me say something for me. Now, Dennis, you might be a really nice dude. Okay, I don't know you like that. But there's a couple of red flags that I saw. The first red flag was them gold teeth. Okay. The second red flag was when you asked him to describe his personality and he said he is a cross between Damon Dash and Farnsworth Bentley. First of all, you just turned 30. How the fuck you even know who Farnsworth Bentley is? Like, anybody heard that name in 20 years? That's number one. Number two, Damon Dash, angry ass broke ass the world owes me something damn it days you might want to keep an eye on that one for me the third thing was he said he didn't lived all over and that when he get bored he just get up and leave now for me you were like oh that's good because i like to travel mm -mm, bro that's not what he said he didn't say he like to tra i like to travel but damn it i live here and when i get done traveling i come back here what he said was when he get bored, he gets up and leaves. Something else he said that was a little bit of a red flag for me. He said he never been in a relationship, but he was in love for five years. So you was in love with somebody for five years, but y'all never made a commitment to each other? Like that's the story we need to explore more for me i feel like you just let that go right over your head i feel like you just let that one walk right past you how you in love with somebody for five years but y'all wasn't y'all didn't commit to each other in no kind of way nothing nothing okay but dennis you seem like a nice guy though you know i'm just I, i'm just saying but they did seem like they had a really good conversation. It seemed like it flowed. They were at the arcade. Premier was talking shit, honey. And it was cool because, you know, I like a good old arcade because, you know, I'm old. I came up during the arcade era, okay? I remember every Saturday morning down to the arcade playing Miss Pac-Man and Galaga and, 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 and Donkey Kong and Frogger, okay? I remember all them games, okay? Taking all my damn allowance money down to the arcade, child, okay? Um... So they were, they was cool. They were competitive. And then Premier was like, you know what? I'm kind of feeling him. And I know that he kind of feeling me. So what we can ready to do is we about to get out of here. We about to get away from these cameras. And I'm about to take him to one of my little spots. Now, Premier, was that spot in your bedroom? You said one of your little hidden spots that don't a whole lot of people go to. Is that your apartment? Anyway, I ain't mad at you, though. The day looked like it went really nice. Now, Jamil was on the way to his second date with David. Remember, David was the guy that his friends chose for him. So, Jamil is waiting. He done got him a little drink, little cocktail. He waiting. He waiting. Now, I don't know how long he really waited, and I don't know how late David really was. But he hit David with the, what's up, where you at, text. David sends back a soliloquy explaining why he not there. David, that was real dirty. First of all, David was like, I met somebody before I met you, and I'm really interested in exploring that and seeing where it goes. Well, the way y'all talking like, y'all talking like all this transpired in a 24, 48-hour time period. So that means that you knew, you knew 
you had met somebody before you went on this little speed dating, blind date situation. You should have bowed out then, like the other guys did. You should have been like, you know what, I met somebody, and, you know, I'm going to explore that. And you could have texted him before he was sitting at the damn bowling alley waiting for you. Because I feel like, I feel like you knew in enough time for him not to be sitting there waiting on your ass. Okay? But Jamil made lemonade out of lemons. He called up Jeremy, who he really feeling anyway, and was like, yo, you busy? Because I done already, I'm down here, I done already had two or three drinks, I'm a little loose, why don't you come down to the bowling alley? Now they didn't bowl. They played arcade games as well, and they looked like they were having a good time. Jeremy was available, he was free, and he came down, and they looked like they had a good time. And then, um, uh, Jamil did the same thing that Premier did. Jamil was like, you know, I thought it was really cool, we were, we were, we were, we was, you know, we had sort of got that first date out the way, so we were able to just kind of play and enjoy each other's company. You know, I had a good time. Like, I'm not a real big gamer, but, you know, the arcade games were cool. You know, and then they did the dance game and all that stuff, and so they had a good time. They looked like they were having fun and talking and all that good stuff. And then Jamil hit us with the same, the okie doke, like, okay, so I'm ready to go spend some time with Jeremy away from the cameras. I was like, okay, we can't go to the second, we can't go. And see what the rest go. We can't. I mean, okay. Fine then. Don't let me come on a date with you. So, next week is the finale where we find out if they have made a love match or they have just found another good friend. Um, so, that'll be very interesting to see how it goes down. They're going to re, you know, connect up with their friends and kind of go over how the dates went and then sort of debrief or whatever. So, y'all, it was cool. It was a really cool episode. Um, I hate that David did that. Um, I feel like Jamil sort of got cheated a little bit. But because he is feeling Jeremy, I guess it kind of worked out, you know. Anyway, y'all let me know what y'all think. Drop it in the comments. Peace.